Hey everybody, what's up? Cedric and Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we will be reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 34, Day 7. We got one more to do. Hopefully they on break for a little bit so we can get caught up because we're going to do that one today as well, uh, Day 8. In addition, after this review, we will also be changing how we do the review. Uh, Cedric thinks it'll be a lot better if we do, if I'm correct, just match results and talk about the match a little bit yeah for what i guess we can remember and then move on yeah so we'll the, try and see how it works so the reviews will be a lot shorter and as she just said it's a tryout so you all let us know which format you like most all right i think that's fair um and if we don't get a response then we'll just keep doing it cedar's way and if it works for us yeah because there's a lot that she has to do and want to do and can't do because we're doing a lot outside of these recordings that you know of. Um, so, okay. Uh, this day seven, A block action all the way. And whoo, here we go. So it starts off with Evil versus Callum Newman. And uh, so in my notes, Evil comes out alone, and when Callum exits, Togo goes uh, jumps in from behind on the stage. Yep. It's two on one uh, before the bell ring. Callum fights back, suplexing Evil on the ramp. After throwing Evil in the ring, the bell rings. Callum hits a very beautiful tornado kick to the back of the head, and it meant nothing at all. Nothing. Evil just kept it moving. He and should, he should have been flattened. He should have been flattened on that mat for at least a couple of minutes. And what I had to explain to Cedra was that's not Evil's fault. That's Callum Newman. You know, Callum did that spot. And because that tornado kick was supposed to mean nothing, that's why Evil didn't sell it. Because Evil can sell. He can sell like somebody stabbing him to death. Yes. Hot outside, a hundred and... 10 degrees outside, and Evil will come up to me and be like, hey, man, have you had these jalapenos? And I'll be like, no, it's kind of burning up out here. I got an umbrella. You ought to try these jalapenos. I'm like, all right, man. I, I, he can sell. <laughs> he can sell. <laughs> you know, he can sell water to people drowning on the Titanic. Just, <laughs> but this was, this was Callum. You know, that, that was his thing. If there was supposed to be a heavy hit move, Evil would have dropped. It, it, ain't no question about it. So, you know, but I'm, I'm going to tell y'all straight up, though. That tornado kick was beautiful. It was, it was pretty. All right? It was very pretty. If it was a woman, it'd be unmatched. Okay. If it was a dude, it'd be all angular face, man, with the, with the eight pack of ribs and stuff. <laughs> eight pack of ribs. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, triceps, your biceps going. Side sips. You know, side sips, you know, quad sips. <laughs> you know, he, he would have had all of it. And <laughs> you had back sips too. Oh shit. So <laughs> um so I'll be honest with you, because of that, I lost far more care for Newman. Now some can put blame on Evil for for not selling. I must remind you that Evil wasn't supposed to sell it. So we skipped. So the ref is down. Newman is beating them up. Evil shoves the ref into Newman who, uh, who counters Evil and uses Magic Killer on him with the unwitting assistance from the ref. Yeah. Okay. Evil fights back, throws Newman into an exposed corner twice and hits the leg swept STO for a three count win. So good. Good. That's nice. Next match. Whew. We get Great Okan versus Jake Lee. And with that, this is a good pro wrestling match. They're showing they have various gears to work with. Okan uses single leg takedowns followed by a rounding middle kick and a thrust kick. And then driving his knee into the side of Lee's knee. <laughs> He was wearing that knee out. <laughs> okay. You put a knee to somebody's knee, man. That's so you don't like him. <laughs> okay. Okan begins working the knee. Okan be, uh, begins out wrestling Lee with leg takedowns and ankle locks. 
Lee is in great pain under the the pain of the reverse great von knee bar and he had it locked in. Cedra is laughing her <laughs> ass the off look about on it. his face. The look on his face. He couldn't have shown any more pain if Okan was sawing that leg off. <laughs> It, it was off the hook, pain. <laughs> Okan goes in for a leg takedown and catches a stiff knee strike to the upper chest area, dropping him for a two count. Jake missed his boot kick, so his leg was draped over the corner, and that he, then he takes a German suplex that knocks his hair loose. So Okan counters with an Iron Claw's complete shot. And then delivers a high angle iron claw slam for the three count win. So Khan finally gets the win. Finally. That he needs. In a devastating fashion. Yep. Because he should have won. The, 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 the past two matches he lost, he should have won. It was obvious, too. He should have won. Because he's going and going and then just stop. Mm -hmm. And when you see someone just stop, it, that's, a, that's a sign. Or he gets into the match and he's not wrestling his match. And it looks and sounds like it's by choice. Yeah. Like he's putting the person over so much he forgets to do anything for himself. <sighs> That's what it looked like. Yeah. Next we get Shoto Umino versus Zack Sabre Jr. And I, I swear Umino started his intro from the outside. Yeah. So we skipped to the ring yes. before they locked up. So Zack mercilessly, mercilessly works the legs, wrenching it... Uh, Wrenching on the ankle for a few good times. A few good times. And I mean, it's like those grab it and jerk it real hard. It's like, oh, oh. my goodness. You can I, feel it. Mm. You can feel it. It, uh. Umino hit, um, hit the up and over DDT that aggravated Junior's arm stinger. And normally, I think it was his right arm that um, was supposedly injured at some point, but his left arm, he just kind of, he wouldn't leave it alone. And his arm won't get worked on. It just, Zach just. He DDT'd him over the top rope onto the apron. And Zach's neck looked bad. His head and neck looked bad when it hit. And after that, he was having issues. The arm won't work on. No, it won't. It won't work on. It's coming from that neck. Uh-huh. It's little things like that that we see, you know. Because if because in, in a combat sport, if somebody does something and that part starts to hurt, you're going to go after that part. Mm -hmm. He didn't. He didn't. So it wasn't part of the match. You know, I hope Zach is all right. Um, and so, um, and what I, my note says, we think it's real due to seeing Junior limp from the arm pain. He got up and he started limping. That's, that shows some legitimate, anyone that got had a dislocated shoulder or elbow or broken arm, um, or taking a heavy shot to the shoulder or shoulder blade area, you know you that leg says for some reason I just can't work with you properly. So that that I'm like that that might be legit. Um, Umino hit the double arm DDT for a shallow two count, like one two kick out. It was just <laughs> Junior countered a sloppy hidden blade with an arm breaker. Junior gets into his ground skills, working the legs and changing up into various holes. Zach's in his is in mode at this moment. Zach ruins Umino's chance to escape a few good times while fully grapevining the legs, and he had him all bent up. Zach couldn't do anything else. Zach had himself all folded up, trapping his legs. It's like an Indian deathlock type thing with the whole body. Mm -hmm. Umino eventually, after a long time, he grabs the ropes. While Toto slowly gets up, Zach. Kicks the legs, leads into a slow strike exchange, which I didn't think should have happened due to the legs being so beaten on. I, I figured it should be a little different. But after a scuffle, Shota rests on his knees while Junior middle kicks him. I was a little annoyed by that. I was like, kick the. I was, I was just, I'm just frustrated with Umino right now. Mm -hmm. um, Shota awakens as fast attacks with place uh, that takes place only countered. And broken up with short strikes to the legs and stuff like that. So, there are hope spots, but Umino just keeps getting shut down. Both are ailing when Umino hits a version of the Emerald Flosion. It was more like an Emerald Flow Slam. <laughs> but then he used the double arm DDT to get the three count victory on Zack Sabre Jr., which we heavily 
disagree with. Yeah. Um, Shota. I'm not happy with him, and I'm about ready to start skipping his matches like Callum. Shota, when he was a young lion, he was well on his way to finding his own way until he got contaminated by goon, first of all. Then it's almost like he sat somewhere and said, I'm going to do the moves of the people that I like the most instead of thinking about what it, what do I like the most. Now, here's the thing. Check this out. Listening to people, when I listen to people on YouTube and someone asks the question, I'm starting on YouTube, what should I do? Mm -hmm. And even I knew it, but they'll tell them. You watch someone, you copy them. He's like, that's what it, the ones that I listen to, which is various people, they all say that we copy, we copy those that we liked. And then over time, you start to realize you don't want to do this. So you'll do something else instead. It'll be your own. And you'll steadily over time start making things your own because you get tired of doing something somebody else does. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where Shota is. Yeah. I think he's just, okay, I'm going to do these things. He's still a fan per se, but eventually it's going to be, I need to actually work. Because mm -hmm. we already know Sonata's a huge, huge student and fan of KG. Yep. But when he gets in the ring, although you see elements, it's all Sonata. Yep. And you could say the same thing for you, 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 Amura. Yeah. Yeah. Remura, yeah. You see elements. Actually, you see fewer elements than you see out of Sonata. Yeah. But, but what you see of Remura is like, you can tell both of them are KG Muto, Chono Masahiro fans. They were trained, probably trained by them or mentored by them at least. And as he just said, you know, yeah, Sonata, he takes from them little pieces, but he's got his own. Mm -hmm. Where Morda, he's still in his development. But you're seeing, it's like, it's like you're seeing him shine more so than you're seeing Shota shine in his Yes, matches. where Morda got his, he, he still does his, some of his Young Lion stuff. Mm -hmm. He's still there. So that's uh, probably, that's what it is. He still got that zeal that vigor gotta do it gotta be there maybe maybe that's what that maybe that's what's driving us with him because i like show to seem like he done kind of lost who he was umina's like well when murder's like i i know where i was i know where i want to be and i'm going to marry him eventually shelter is just a piecemeal right now that's what you, you is a piecemeal you can't be a rough small neck. brawl you can't be a rough neck in pink and white frilly pants Okay, <laughs> you can't. You can't be a roughneck giving high fives and giving away pink batons. No, it, it doesn't. No, no, you can't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't vibe. It doesn't mesh. <laughs> so he's definitely still. He's definitely still finding himself. Roughneck. Yeah, really. Right. So next we get Gabe Kidd versus Shingo Takagi. Um. <sighs> Okay, this is not go this review isn't going to go the way y'all think. Whew. Okay, so Gabe rolled up to Shingo talking trash. Shingo looked confused at first. Okay, through commentary, they have beef and they started off heavy. They did open up parts of the match, they outright bludgeoned each other, and it was captivating. Gabe mocks Takagi, pointing to the crowd, and he shouts, My time coming. Fuck you, bitch. And I'm like, oh, okay. Fans not too happy with that, but they want to like him. They have a good strike exchange until Takagi goes high near the throat and kid staggers. They dump each other with Takagi getting the better of it. As the match slows, Takagi takes a heavy lariat, feigns weakened, and then turns up the heat. They battle as heavy as they started with Kid blocking the finish and hitting a power driver for a two count. 
Ken Takagi go heavy on the shots with Kid hitting the ropes and delivering his 180 lariat, but he can't make the cover due to a slow recovery. Cedric gets annoyed with Kid slapping, even though Shingo wins out each time. Kid hits the uh, hits two rolling pile drivers, gains a three count win. And see, so you sitting there with your, your 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 fist on your your face. Takagi showed up for the, I guess, man on man strike exchange battles, but I don't feel like Shingo showed up. Shingo. No, he didn't. Shingo was probably there for maybe thirty percent of the time, but still. This was like Shingo when he's like going against someone like Ishii when we was watching far more a few years ago. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm going to tell y'all this. This is a Gabe kid I can get behind. I like this Gabe kid. Get in, fight, wrestle, struggle, work hard, do your best. Yeah, he didn't was... undersell. He didn't oversell. It didn't look stupid. It didn't look fake. It didn't look phony. It didn't start outside. It didn't go outside. Because I think Takagi was like, I'm not going outside. Like, I ain't doing that stupid stuff. I'm not going out there. Like, now, he can. But, but generally, he it, doesn't. Yeah. He's far more impressive if you watch him in the ring. And this right here gave Kid look good. But the thing is, Takagi had to look bad to make him look good. Yeah. But... Maybe it's because we haven't seen their previous matches, so we don't know how they went. This could be Takagi doing a, doing him a favor or doing something for their personal storyline if they got one going. Yeah. So that the next one, maybe Takagi goes over or it's more of a balance. We haven't been watching, so, so we don't this know. could just be part of that. So, you know, there's, there are two judgments. The initial what we see here and then... Maybe the stuff we haven't seen. So I'm trying to be fair. Yeah. But this is a Gabe kid that I like. Those other ones, I was, I'm like, I'm ready to skip. Mm -hmm. But but this this was good. This was this was good. So now we get to the main event. Sonata versus Tetsuya Naito. Um. And I took. I guess I took plenty of notes. I couldn't help it. This is like the the. the Almost the sports commentator came out in me on this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. But look, in the next one, it's going to be shorter. And you're going to learn why I take notes. <laughs> you're going to learn why I take notes. Um, upon the entrance, this is what I wrote. This is what I, I realized I was in trouble. I realized I was in trouble when I wrote this line. Upon the entrance, both competitors are in deep contemplation, silently building the hype of the match. <laughs> I was like, ah, shit. Playing the groundwork, setting the stage. Yeah. I, 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 so Naito spits on Sonata, and they go into a chase where Sonata flips over the ropes to the outside as Naito goes into his tumbling boast, his tranquilo boast. Mm -hmm. Sonata doesn't slow down as he slides into the ring and drop kicks Naito in the head, in the head. while <laughs> he was on the mat boasting. He, he, I was like, yeah, Cedric was so happy with that. Uh -huh. She was like, like yes, get him. Get him. Like, if you ever seen Tropic Thunder, I want you to hit him in the face really hard. He goes, sorry, boss. And he decks him. And the guy goes, yes. yes. Like, yes. satisfaction. That's what Cedra was. I, 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 I kind of smirked. I'm like, what is wrong with this woman? Nah, man, because, you know, I told me getting everybody. And most of the time, it's satisfying because he's wrestling assholes. But not as an asshole himself. And Sonata can do no wrong. Sonata know what you're going to do. <laughs> Sonata can do no wrong. You gonna do that? You gonna do that, Sonata? He'll drop kick you in the head. And Sonata had the faintest little smile on his face too. Uh huh. Then Sonata kind of got a cow face. Yeah. And we ain't talking about. Oh, you look like a farm animal. <laughs> no, we're not saying that. <laughs> but cows got like that single expression. Almost kind of like, what the hell do you want now? It's like that expression says it's no expression, <laughs> but it. Here you go. <laughs> you just. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I... <laughs> See, I'm gonna go do the review. You, got to... you over there laughing? <laughs> but Sonata just looks like no matter what it is, he's just gonna do. He's gonna be him. No matter what. 
<sighs> I'm gonna have to just talk over her laughing. She just <laughs> You look like a farm animal. <laughs> what the hell? I just want them to know I'm not describing him to look like some damn cow. He just it's just that plain, unmovable face. But it's so expressionate with yeah. its unmovingness or it, what, whatever the hell. It is. It, it is. It's, Damn. <laughs> all right. Okay. So once all calm, they return to, and, and I wrote this, once all calms, they return to wrestling in the ring with headlocks, a few reversals as Sonata controls the pace. Eventually, Naito renders a few counters and starts his opening offense with low drop kicks, a few elbows, and that tranquilo net breaker for a two count. So Naito controls the match with a leg lace crucifix hold until Sonata gets a foot on the ropes. The match goes a bit even until Naito is dumped outside the ring and then thrown back in. Once in the ring, they steadily go move for move, jockeying for a clear dominance. Slowly, it seems Naito may win in that regard as he works the neck of the former longest reigning world champion. So Naito tries to continue, uh, continue yeah. Naito tries to continue, but Sonata drop kicks the knee, hits the rope hung dragon screw net breaker, but he couldn't really follow up. As they recover, Naito rushes for anything to gain the advantage, nearly hitting Destino, but Sonata turns that into the TKO and yet unable to follow up. So right now we are closing in on what is building to be a four star match. Sonata hits the Shining Wizard, goes for, uh, and then he goes up and he hits the Moonsault Press, as they call the Rounding Body Press, which is what it was initially called before the Moonsault, but that, he only hit that for a two count. Naito reverses a hold into the Northern Light Suplex. Sonata hit the Japanese Leg Roll Clutch, but only for a two count, and it was, it was close. It was close. It was close. Yeah. Um, then he hit the Shining Wizard, but he doesn't go for the pin. He picks him up. Naito counters. I think he was going for the TKO, but Naito counters to the Destino for a two count. And then after that, Sonata being staggered, Naito hit the Destino again, but he hit it properly for the three count. And he finally got his main event win in what they say, eight years. And, and Fukuoka. So they were happy. Naito being a little troll, mm -hmm. he's talking, he's doing his, his, his uh, main event boast, and he starts to linger a little bit to keeping him <laughs> in weight, and then he goes into the roll call of Los Ingobernables de Japón, and the crowd's with him. The whole crowd, they were right there, they were so excited. I have never heard a Japanese crowd do that in such unison. Mm -hmm. And then, it won't over, because after the match, he goes and, and gives, you know, the L.I.J. fist bump to Bushi. And then he just walked past uh, Hiromu. And everyone's like, hey, the commentary, mm -hmm. the Japanese commentary, and a few fans that were watching, they, you can hear them like, hey, Hiromu, Hiromu. Some was pointing at him. And Hiromu was like, hey, hey man. man, hey, man. <laughs> and Nato starts like, man, why I got to do this? You can <laughs> see it on his face like, why I got to do this? He turns around. He goes back. And they try to do the fist bump. Not just like, no, nah, you got to get up and come right here. And he will get up and he trots around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's all happy. And he waits and Naito's like, I don't know. I don't know. Then Naito initiates it. And then they do it. And Hiromu looks so happy. He was so proud. I, look, I know Hiromu. You know, yeah, this, this is a grown ass man. I get it. But he's always going to be little Hiromu to me. Mm -hmm. Always. And probably to Naito. Yep. Just... Did, like, don't hurt Hiromu. That's where we are. Mm -hmm. And Hiromu is the most passionate one of the group. He is. I mean, he'll pull you in. He'll pull you into his storylines. He was the one who was angriest about evil yes. turning and leaving. Hiromu made us dislike evil for a while. Mm -hmm. And then evil finished it up. Yep. <clears throat> so... That that that's the review. That's how we gonna do that. And next one is going to be a lot different and probably a whole lot shorter. So you let us know at the end of day eight what you like because I'm not gonna be writing any notes. I'm gonna watch it, do our quick spiel, and just see how it is. So with that, 
It's been Cedric Casidio for CR Wrestling Commentary, New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 34, Day 7. And with that, I want y'all to be good, be chill, be safe, and we will see you next time.